it's like so beautiful. I mean, he's just like in there, like, boom, you know, it's like vacant ping, just real basic things. Just jab, jab cross, you know, double jab, you know, and just movement. You yeah. think, oh, this guy, you know, like he's not nobody. And then I seen him fight and he surprised me. Yeah. You know, he got, he, he earned my respect a lot. Is that, I don't know what I do if I seriously hurt somebody. Like, what if I knock the guy out and he got like, because I hit him hard. I mean, I hit him so hard it broke my hand. Like, what if that guy, like, has damage because of me. I don't know if I can handle that. You know, the professor's tough, man. He's a wild man, you know. Um, he, uh, you know, he, he, he comes in here and, you know, he's got that long reach, you know. Um, and he's, I'm sure you watched his last fight, you know, he's, I mean, he's just, he's just got a natural killer instinct, you know. Like, you would not think of being a college professor and all, but, you know, I mean, he, he, he went in there and, I, you know, I felt he's dormant. And I had to go in there and clean up the blood, and it looked like somebody got attacked by a tiger or something. You know, it was just, it was pretty vicious. And, um, you know, that's the thing is, like, I've never seen him like that in practice. You know what I mean? He's always worried about, you know, himself getting hurt, hurting other people. He's always conscious of those things, so that you never see his aggression level until he's actually, actually in the cage, you know. And, um, yeah, he's, uh, you know, he's, he's tough. It's very difficult but you just find time of day. So times when I'm training for a fight, like right now, I just have to be really diligent about what I do when I do it. So I know, for instance, that I get up at 6 a.m., I drive 40 minutes in here, and I got an hour and a half before I gotta be in my office to prepare stuff to teach, so I just kind of factor that in. So three times a week, I'll do two workouts a day, and then two times a week, two workouts with two. So I know you just kind of think in your head, but it sucks because I have no time to have fun the night before. Four or five weeks I was training about six hours, five hours a day. Uh, except I'd take Wednesdays off and I'd go in every once in a while on the weekends for like an hour or two, but most of the time it was like yeah, five, six hours. Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, you just gotta make the time. Because if you don't make the time, you don't train, then there are like real physical consequences. You get your ass kicked, which is not the same as say I don't get in an article on time, the you know, consequences of that are minimal compared to getting kicked in the head because I didn't focus on, you know, I didn't train enough keeping my guard up or something. So I kind of like that about MMA is that if there's like real consequences if I don't prepare, my cardio is down, I feel the pain of that <laughs> as opposed to like, eh, I didn't do really good on my PowerPoint presentation for this, like, oh, people just be grumpy, oh well. But I mean, I, um, the, the time management, I think, is just is a great skill, and it, this kind of helps me learn my time management better. You know, just because you're grown up and have a career doesn't mean that you don't need to work on your time management. Everybody still does. But that's, we you know, time management's one of the reasons. I'm also married, and so if you're married, you should spend time with the one you love. And when you're training for two extra hours every night, um, that takes you away from them. So that's another reason. And I'm just getting old, and it hurts. You know, it, it, it yeah. After a while, it hurts being thrown down and choked. Very good energy, great guy. He puts his hard work in, even even though he, you know, has a full-time job, wife. You know, he comes in early in the morning, puts the hard work in. You know, he, he knows what it takes to to be a fighter and the sacrifices he has to make. You don't you don't balance it. If it's if it's something that you, unlike art and things like that. I mean, I know that it's, I'm sure somebody would argue against this with me, but unlike a lot of those things where you can you can gather your supplies and it's all about taking some time to yourself to complete a little bit of the task and things like that. This is about going all in. It's your whole body, it's your diet, it's your mind, it's uh, you, everyone around you has to support you too. I mean, my I know my girlfriend had a tough time seeing me come home with like bruises all over my body and I wouldn't be able to move. I was just like, just laying there on the couch or, you know, just chilling. She'd be like, are you okay? And it's, you know, I mean, most of the time I was concussed as well. So I spent most of my time just sitting there not drooling, but with my mouth open, just staring off in the distance. So, so I spend most of my Friday nights. Spar with him all the time. Uh, I mean, he actually he checked one of my kicks the other day, and uh, I couldn't walk for like two days. You know, um, actually, I probably still yeah, still got some bruising there from it. Um, I mean, I think he's got potential. You know, he told he told me and Alex, the other guy that cornered him, that you know this is just kind of like a. Uh, it's kind of a bucket before his fight he told us it was kind of a bucket list thing and afterwards you know he said he said there's no way that i can't do this again you know so uh you know i think i i put my money on him in his next fight you know i think he i think he learned from the experience you know it's it's a lot of pressure to go in there 
you know, and uh, fight in front of a thousand people. I did quit a job. I took a, I had a, a job at an um, alehouse downtown, um, but I quit that so that I could keep doing the fighting. And I wasn't working in the dining hall either, so I had my RA role, which I couldn't quit because I need, I need that money for housing. But apart from that, everything else was quit. My grades were dropping too. Uh, this is probably the worst semester academically that I've had since I came to, to, to college, but it's been much more fulfilling because fighting is awesome. So, screw the classes. Um, I, I wanted something that would require me to focus on more than one skill. So I, I, was, I, I was interested in karate as a kid and I did the other sports and stuff, but um, that's just one thing, right? So you do karate and then you just do that. Um, I did track and field and you do like one or two disciplines. But mixed martial arts, not only is it just fun to watch and it allows you to do something that you're not allowed to do in real life, which is beat someone up, right? Because if you do, you can get arrested or something else and it's socially kind of uh, stigmatized. Not only does it allow you to do that, but it also requires that you focus, that, that you, um, do multiple things. And since I'm kind of a guy of liberal arts, like for my own research I do, um, it covers history and language and technology, sociology and anthropology and all that stuff. I was like, well, this is kind of cool. It's kind of like my career, but with a hobby. So I'm gonna have to do not just kickboxing, but also striking and jujitsu and some wrestling and some grappling and all that stuff against the cage that looks like you're not doing much to the spectators. But when you are up there, you're wizard your thing down is your head in there and there's like eight things going on and if you don't do one right then that guy punches you in the face you're like okay I didn't do that right I kind of like that I kind of like that it was um, a multifaceted I feel like I started late because when I actually did start training then I was like this is fun like I really enjoy this I should start earlier but yeah senior year of high school so I was about 18 years old um, buddy of mine was a karate champ kicked my ass and I was just like this is this is not where I want to be. Like, I want to be stronger, I want to be able to defend myself, uh, I want to be physically fit, things like that. So a lot of it was more of um, a fitness thing at the very beginning, uh, and it was karate. So I was doing karate, it was a fitness thing, running a bit, lifting a few weights. And then I started getting more and more into it, I started picking up more boxing, I really enjoyed boxing. And then Muay Thai took over from karate. So rather than keep doing karate, I picked up Muay Thai and really focused on that because I really like using the knees and the elbows. And uh, a lot of the movement in Muay Thai is very fluid. I enjoy that more than karate. Lots of, I had lots of support from my teammates, uh, from my girlfriend, from my coaches. Um, everybody was really there for me. So I, I didn't doubt, like I, I didn't doubt that I'd get in the ring, but I doubted that I would win. So that's, that's how it went. Um, my wife and some of my friends, they saw for four months how I went from 220 pounds to 185 pounds and how much freaking energy and time I put into it. And they know some of the other people on the team. And it's just, it's, it's, it's a, it like, it was what? I think my fight was two, hundred, two minutes and 30 seconds or yeah. something. Quick one, yeah. It was quick. And those, just those two minutes, and 30 seconds, that was four months of work, maybe even longer going up to actually even longer. Cause it was, it'd been a long time over a year since my last fight. No eight, six or seven months since my last fight. So all that just for two and a half minutes, then you get your hand raised, that's awesome. Because it all culminates in like, I won. And then looking over at the other guy and saying like, oh my God, I did that to that guy, but he's okay is also a good feeling. Because I don't really know that, the other reason that's kind of my last, I'll be honest, is that I didn't necessarily, it's not that I was, I disliked, but I didn't like beating up another guy so much. His eye was like, the guy's eye was like gushing down. And I was like, oh crap, I did that. Cause that's not, I don't think that it's necessarily constructive. Walking in, like doing the walk-in, that part was probably one of the most exciting parts of the fight. That's all. Yeah. Apart from getting hit, which is a lot of fun. Yeah. Like, and every day, like the professor, like gradually just, you know, just getting it, getting it, getting it. Like he's kind of like your ideal student of something that you would want because if you tell him something, he's going to get it like this. And I don't know if it's just, you know, because he is a teacher, Right? And he understands like how to like the learning capabilities, like that learning curve, and just knows how to get it, you know. But he he has it, you know. And even like with his agent, I don't I don't care. Like if I get like uh, if I get a full camp with him, like he will fight anybody, you know what I mean? Because he's just like that good, and that's that's uh, that's kind of awesome to have that. First of all, never judge somebody by the way they look, because I've gone against people uh, jujitsu. I've gone against people uh, kickboxing that I thought, well, they're going to be cream puff or they're going to be slow, they're large. 
and they beat the crap out of me because they just had more training and they were more focused and they were calm. I've also gone against people who were I knew were taking steroids because they had zits all over and they had rage and were bigger than me and stronger and I beat the crap out of them because they were uncoordinated and dropping and I was like, oh my god, I've learned something. He's dropping his hand, just boom. So never judge somebody by a character. It's taught me a lot of humility, something I already had. <laughs> That's the least humble thing to say. Um, but it's, it's something I felt like I, I, I practiced, uh, or at least tried to practice. Um, and then when I fought, I realized that you have no idea what a person's capable of until they actually hit you, until they actually put their hands on you. Um, you know, because people talk shit all the time in the fight game. They're always like, you, know, you can't throw a punch for this, you can't, you know, wrestle with that and all that. And you finally you hit them, you get back at them, and then you realize what everyone's capable of. So discipline, a lot of discipline. You walk into the dining hall and you see all those cookies and you see, you know, cinnamon rolls and you see all those, you know, juicy, delicious things and you're just like, no, not, not today, not for the next five weeks, you know, not for the next two months. That's usually how it goes, you know, food, food discipline, but also in terms of like academics. Um, I know that my, um, my fall semester finals were amazing and that whole week I never opened a, a book to study but all I did was um, especially that finals week since I had all that time you don't have classes anymore I'd go train uh, most of the day of about like eight hours or so and then I'd come home write up an essay or whatever and submit it got great grades but it was all because my mind was you know flowing my blood was flowing so um, yeah so it's you can take um, what do you call that motivational hits though for sure I mean there's mornings you wake up everything hurts you know you don't even you don't want to get out of bed you don't want to talk to people you all your face is busted up or your body's busted up in some ways so you're limping all the way to the dining hall and you you know that hits you sometimes yeah, yeah I think he's doing pretty well you know he uh, he puts a lot of hard work in personally I think he needs to do more uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu because when it goes you know everything it always starts it starts with the hands first and it always goes to the ground I've learned the hard way myself getting tapped out in fights that you need Brazilian Jiu Jitsu for you know the even for the submissions everything the stigma um, it does stick like it, and it gets frustrating sometimes when people you know they you know they look at you or you tell them like oh yeah I like to fight and then they're like oh, you're a violent person or this or that and you're like you play GTA go away no. <laughs> go play your violent video games and watch your violent television. I mean, all I do is go practice, you know, practice my kicks and practice my punches and I go home. I don't hit anybody and I never yell at anyone. So like, <laughs> why am I the bad guy? Just cause like, I go and I train with my boys. I, the violence is unfortunately a part of life. It can be controlled violence or it can be uncontrolled. I'd go for the control. I do consider myself a fighter knowing like the community I've been with, how I feel about it now, how I feel about it in the future. It's not something I'm gonna, gonna give up on for sure you trust me i read a lot more and i'm a lot more boring than you think <laughs> i do so for all the hours that i put in for mma i put in 10 times as much reading writing answering stuff so and that's what i love doing this is just like an alternate universe for me we all love those it's one of those things you start and it's hard to stop <laughs>